Hey everybody and welcome to another devlog video for the procedural city generator. <laughs> I know it's been months since I've made one of these, uh, but if you've been following along, I am taking a small break from the animal behavior kit um, for just a couple of days and I decided to revisit the project and work on this a little bit. Uh, if you've been following along through the, some of the videos in my channel, I recently sent you guys a survey. I asked everybody that could to please fill out a survey telling me what version of Unreal Engine you guys were using. And the main reason was to try to figure out uh, what I wanted to do with this project and every other project that comes afterwards. Um, the project is uh, currently in 4.18. That's kind of like the baseline version that I have. And it's good for backwards compatibility, but there's a bu obviously a bunch of features that have come in the newer versions of the engine that I obviously cannot use because then I can't offer the uh, backwards compatibility. But it turns out that more than half of you are already in 4.22 and, and the other uh, half is probably in 4.21 and probably thinking about moving to 4.22. In other words, everybody um, seems to be either on the latest version or planning to go on the latest version of Unreal. So with that said, then it doesn't really make sense for me to limit myself to an older version if I can use some of the new features that have come up in 4.22. And the biggest one that come up to 4.22 is something called the Editor Utility Widgets. And honestly, that's the main reason I've, I've decided to move this project to 4.22. Uh, basically, it gives you the ability to use UMG widgets uh, as part of a panel here in the editor. So normally, if you've been following the videos, the workflow would be you would, you would grab different blueprints from the uh, content browser into your level, and then these blueprints would have buttons, blue utility buttons, that you would then press and that would basically spawn the rows and things like that. Very ugly interface, uh, but it's still doable, obviously. Uh, but then you would still have to deal with several different blueprints, right? The road managers one, the city generators one, the different zones, density zones, city limits. There's a bunch of different things that go into creating your cities. So when I heard about this feature, I imagined a single unified interface that I could create that you guys could use to do all that uh, process through one single interface. It should be a lot nicer and a lot smoother. Uh, and it should hopefully increase your, your speed, right? Improve your workflow. So that is really the main reason, but there's also other reasons like um, general editor scripting. Now with Blueprint, I can actually access files in here. I can organize folders in the world outliner. I can do a bunch of things that I couldn't do before. Uh, and there's also performance improvements. 422 um, now does auto instancing of meshes. Um, so even if you decide not to turn your cities into hierarchical instant static meshes, the elements that are still static meshes are still going to instance in your city if they're the same. So there's just a bunch of good things that, that definitely make this project better. So in other words, uh, this project will come out in 422. I've just made the decision after fiddling around with this for a couple of days. And hopefully when I show you what I have, you'll agree, right? Um, so first thing is obviously the interface. I have not made any significant changes to the actual code to generate the city at all, right? This is the exact same thing you guys have seen, but I've been working on the interface, right? That's the new thing that I wanted to see as a proof of concept. So I have a new folder called interface and I right click on PCG underscore main, and there's a new option here that's, that says run editor widget. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that a new window comes up, PCG underscore main, and with a bunch of buttons and items here. This is the new interface for the procedural city generator, a single pane where you can do everything you need to create your cities. And notice that this is just a regular widget um, screen. So I can actually um, dock it somewhere else. I can, I can bring it down here. Or I can have it as a single window. I just moved it to my second monitor here, but I can just drag it back. And it is its own free flow window. I can put it anywhere you want. So if you have two screens, you can move this to a second screen, in my case on the left, and you can do everything you want. Um, 
just like any other window in the editor, which is really, really cool. Uh, just right there, I think it's really convenient. So we're gonna go ahead and create two cities and we're gonna use the new menu. Uh, I ha don't have everything um, implemented yet, but I have most of it up until buildings. I don't have props and foliage yet, but I didn't want to uh, wait any longer. I wanted to get you guys' um, feedback on it. So, all right, so the first thing is uh, the tabs here. We have the first tab is creation. And the first thing we do when we wanna create our cities is we need to spawn a road manager. We click here and we spawn a city manager. Notice that when I hover, I can now uh, display some uh, explanations at the bottom here. So depending on the button, I can now give you an explanation of what the blueprint does, and then you can spawn it. And notice that now I spawned it on the map and automatically because of the editor scripting, I've created a new folder called PCG and then under it a subfolder called one.main. So not only am I uh, spawning things uh, in your level instead of dragging, but I can actually keep things organized uh, for your convenience. So um, I like to uh, keep things organized. So hopefully this is a time saver for you guys, right? Uh, city creation, city name. This right here uh, is just, there's nothing here. I do have some uh, ideas um, of how I want to take this. Right now, it doesn't really have a concept of a single city. You kind of spawn everything in, in, your, in your areas. And I want to be able to have an actual CD list that you can go back later and modify. That will make it super convenient for you guys to spawn one or two cities in your map. And then if you change your mind, you can come back and create another city somewhere else. Um, but right now, it's just a field. So I'm just going to put a, a random name here because I have a check. Uh, and White Run, if you've ever played Skyrim, you probably know what this is. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that now. We're going to go ahead and spawn our density zone. And this is basically the center of your city. Um, so I'm going to zoom out here. And I'm going to move this guy to this corner here. It's going to be kind of one city. And I'm going to spawn another density zone. And we're going to move it to this corner. So we're going to have two different cities there. Then we spawn the city limits. And notice that again, very convenient. I'm spawning one city limit per density zone. So if you wanted to create five cities at a time and you have five different density zones, this would automatically spawn in the right locations. And I'm going to increase the size of these cities and make them like 2000 by 2000, right? As you can see here, and I can actually move this. I'm going to move this guy a little bit more here. And uh, I'm going to make this guy a little bit longer. So like 2500 just to show a different size. Then I go into the zones. You guys remember these zones, and th there's a little drop down here, determine what kinds of buildings are going to spawn in your city. So uh, this is obviously some pre-work that you have to do. So for commercial zone, for example, I've defined an array of different skyscrapers that can spawn, the sizes, the frequency. I have also defined what kind of foliage and props spawn in the commercial zone, right? So commercial zone could have specific benches or bus stops or whatever, and specific foliage, like different kinds of trees, versus something like a rural zone. This is more like in the countryside. The buildings are gonna be obviously like houses, right? Small houses, ranches, and you, you may have different props and different foliage, right? So these are, uh, by the way, the default ones that come with uh, PCG, but you can define as many zones as you want, literally an unlimited amount. So you can customize your city um, as much as you want. And all you would have to do is uh, create a, a parent of a base class, define your buildings, define your foliage and props, and then you can use it. And the cool thing is, is that I'm building this list from a data table. So if I go here to the data tables folder, there's a new data table that I've created called DT zone list. And you can see that each individual zone is just a row. So let's say that we wanted to create a custom zone. All you had to do is click on the plus sign and you see that you have a new row. You'll give the row a name and I'm just gonna call it custom for now. Then you give the zone name and we're gonna call it custom zone. This is the name that is going to appear on the dropdown. And then you select the class. 
So if I start typing zone, I'm going to say BP zone commercial because I don't have a class for it. Click on save. I want to close this. And then all I have to do is close this widget and reopen it. Run editor widget. And now if I go to zones, notice that I have the custom zone as part of my zones. So uh, really, really neat, right? Again, you would have some preliminary work to set things up, but once you do, creating your city should be really, really quick, right? So let's go ahead and spawn commercial zones, spawn selected zone, and you'll notice that we have two zones that have spawned in the center of the city, more or less, where the density zone is. And let's make these uh, no, 500 by 500. And then let's spawn, uh, whoops, industrial zone. And I'm going to go a little quicker here. 800 by 800. And let me go back to the city limits and hide the marker so it's easier to see. As you can see here. So in this city, the uh, center of the city or the commercial is going to be to a corner. And then the industrial zone is going to be here. And then actually for this industrial zone here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it a uh, thousand. So a little bit longer here than that one. And then let's just spawn a residential zones on each one. And let's make these guys like uh, 2000 by 2000. Nope, that's too big. 1500 by 1500 and I'm going to drag this guy here and even if it goes outside of the city limits it doesn't really matter because the roads will stop at the city limit that's kind of the whole point of it right um, so this guy needs to be a little bit longer let's make it like 1800 to cover everything all right so we we have our two cities I'm going to go ahead and click save. Then we go into the roads. And now you have uh, in auto, auto generation, you have a column for generation and removal. These would be blue utility buttons on the actual blueprint. But instead, I have uh, different buttons. And again, I can use the, the hover functions here to display some explanations as to what these guys do. So go ahead and get scene data and generate our highways. And we have a highway that connects each city. And then we generate our main roads. And then we generate our minor roads and our side roads. And obviously, uh, there's literally dozens of options. I'm going to go into game mode here so you guys can see. There are a lot of different options as far as how many cities, the shape, uh, how many streets rather, the shape of the streets. Uh, and a bunch of different spawn options. Those obviously are not here yet. I do plan to include like a like an advanced uh, section here that you can expand. Um, but I don't plan to have every single option, right? So if there's something very specific, you may still have to go to the blueprint and uh, adjust it there. Again, this is meant to be like a, a, an interface that once you have everything set up, then you can quickly generate your cities and iterate, right? Uh, all right, so we have our cities here. Let's go ahead and save. And now we go into, I'm going to skip park. This basically right now just spawns the park blooper and then you can place it. So let's go ahead and skip that. And for buildings, it's basically the same thing. I'm going to come here so you guys can see as things are spawning. And I'm going to go ahead and get road information. And I'm going to start spawning buildings. And this, remember guys, does it in batches. So you can see there's a batch there and keep going and done and it spawned buildings along the streets for both cities so let me show you guys the frame rate here so not a lot not very good frame rate because every single uh building here is a mesh it's a static mesh but you can see here that we had the dust oops if we go back to uh, outside of game mode you can you can see that this section was the commercial section that's what we have the buildings then the more purple version was industrial, and that's why we have these industrial buildings here, these ugly looking buildings, oops, right here, these guys here. And then on the outskirts, you have residential, which is basically these uh, houses here. And if I travel 
across the highway all the way then you can see that we have this city with a different layout obviously because we had the zones laid out differently uh, all right and now uh, this is what more or less what we're getting we're going to convert the buildings to hierarchical links and static meshes and that right there you notice there's a little marginal uh, increase in frame rate uh, but if I go ahead and uh, actually click play here I'm gonna expand it notice that we're getting way better frame rates when you actually uh, go to play mode And again, none of the code has been uh, optimized. So you can you get these uh, bugs here where there's overlap. So forgive the bugs, guys. Obviously, this has to be fixed. But I just wanted to show you more or less the interface of uh, PCG that we have so far, right? And these building models I added last time, and I don't think I showed them before. They don't have interiors, but the other ones that I that I have did have some interiors. Like these houses I created in Blender and they do have uh, interiors in them. So you can go inside and you can see that when you get close, some uh, furniture spawns and I can actually move the furniture. And when I get far, they despawn to keep performance high. All right, um, and that's pretty much it. I have not implemented props and foliage, but this will basically be the same idea, right? Once you have your buildings and you convert them, then you want to move on to props and spawn your props, right? Props would be things like parked cars, light poles, um, anything like that. And obviously your foliage would be the trees and things like that. So um, again, no changes to the actual code. So you can see that there's clearly bugs uh, there's still a lot of work to be done, but the main thing I wanted to show you guys was the interface. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, is this uh, better? Is it marginally better? Do you really care about this at all? Is this a reason to upgrade to 422? Um, let me know what you think. Uh, is this interface convoluted? I really do want to hear what you guys have to say because to me this is uh, really, really cool, but I do want to hear from you guys. So, all right, guys. That is pretty much it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, please leave your comments um, in the comments below. Or if you're on Discord, feel free to message me on Discord. I do want to hear what you guys have to say. And uh, thank you guys so much for your support and your patience. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.